Well, Gavin, the your day-to-day -day operation has been kind of suspended until further notice due to COVID-19. Um, but how, how are you managing, you and your partners managing, um, not being as active as you used to being on a daily basis and having people down at the Fairmont Southampton um, tennis courts um, doing something that they love? Yeah, I mean, it's, it was it's definitely tricky for us, but, um, you know, we follow our lead with Southampton Princess, um, well, Fairmont Southampton, uh, with, you know, shutting that down so that we can make sure that we're, you know, not assisting it in, in traveling anymore or, or spreading. Um, but for us, I mean, we're still active, still just preparing for whatever's going to come next. We actually had a tournament that was supposed to happen at the beginning of April. We had just finished up an event um, right before it got a bit serious with COVID. Um, but for me personally, I mean, I'm probably more active. I've got two little ones that are just as energetic as I am. So a lot of my energy right now is, you know, being put on them. And then from the MTM standpoint, there's not really any control we have. So we're just making sure that we're ready to hit the ground running when, when the opportunity presents itself. You are still quite active and, and, and uh, wanting to have that number one seed um, streak continue to some sorts. Um, how, how has it been over the last few months for you? Um, I know one tournament you struggle with uh, bronchitis, um, but um, how has it been for you over the last few months in, in playing singles? Um, I mean, it's, I mean, it was just recovery, really. Um, you know, I, I had the bronchitis through that tournament. I just had to, to get out there and, and defend my, my spot, um, which I did to the best of my ability under the circumstances. Um, but he was just better on the day. Um, but when it comes to that, I mean, I mean, it's tricky times right now because, you know, through that process, I've been just trying to eat healthier and get, get my mind right, get, you know, uh, going with the family and get everything balanced um, so that I could find if I have the time to, to, to do what I need to stay at the top. But it's, you know, with, with this COVID thing, it just kind of puts things in perspective. So I, I don't really know. I mean, I'm a day to day right now, spending quality time with the boys and developing them as much as I, I would if I just had this time. So, it, you know, this thing's kind of put a lot of things into perspective. Now, last year you received an award for your Davis Cup accomplishments. Um, it must be high up on your Richter scale as far as um, accomplishments in the sport. Yeah, I mean, you know, from if we're talking about, uh, you know, on an international level, I mean, there's only 400 of these guys that have received this in the, the Davis Cup in the history. Um, it's from a commitment of sacrifice and, you know, everything that we just mentioned, you know, with the COVID it puts in perspective some of those things that you were missing on when you were putting in that type of time to play at that type of level. So the, the award, you know, is a perfect time in to, to, to think about that because the commitment, the reason that that award is there is because you commit and you sacrifice your life pretty much to a sport. And then that is what you get from them. Uh, but being with these COVID, you kind of see with the family and everything. Um, that's what that award, you know, represents to me is the amount of time and sacrifice that it took to, to get it. Um, and now appreciate it and be able to hopefully, you know, use that knowledge to, to help the next generation and my own kids. You mentioned uh, the tournament just finished at, uh, it was a doubles tournament um, at, at Fairmont Southampton. Um, take us through that particular tournament because it was quite interesting the way the matchups were. Yeah, so I mean, we continue to get creative. I mean, we don't have big numbers here. We we always say, listen, we're trying to grow the sport in any way we can. So we put single, I mean, the doubles, the men's teams, women's teams, or mixed doubles all playing in one event. Um, so what happened was it was actually, I believe it was three mixed doubles teams that made it to the semifinals. Um, and two that played in the finals. So Laverne Stowe and Benjamin Jones won that. Um, and, it, you know, we just have to continue to get creative to get, the people out, everyone had a great time. Um, it was exactly what a lot of the, the you know, people who were playing needed right before you would go into something like this. You get a nice release. It was great energy. It was great matches, um, great people together. And, and that's what we're trying to do. 
we have some very interesting times ahead with tennis and some youngsters coming through, such as Daniel, Tariq, and and um, Trey. Um, where do you see them in the very near future? Only because you actually had Trey and Tariq with you in Costa Rica um, for the Davis Cup. Yeah, I mean, these guys, um, the, the great thing about tennis is, you know, even with uh, everything that's going on, they can at least get some form of hitting in. It's it's one of the sports that falls under social distance and that, uh, you know, with the best of them. Um, but this is going to be interesting to see who comes out with this because it is an opportunity for some people can't train. You know what I mean? This will be maybe one of the first times that we have a situation where, well, for Tariq and Trey, that's here because um, Daniel was actually on lock, well, was on lockdown in Spain. I know he's still working through that. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe they can use this time to to catch up and work on their skills where some can. Um, but I mean, to me, the future is bright with these guys. Um, you know, I have to figure out my own place and what I'm going to do and all of that. But these guys are, I mean, next 10 years um there's going to be a lot of success from Tariq Trey and Daniel in all the respective areas Daniel out in Europe um Trey just moved into the top 400 in um ITF you know Tariq's uh got the one spot here right now and went down and won a national event down in Jamaica um so these guys are doing things that myself and Javon Ritter and you know other players that played at the higher level when we were younger they're starting to to truly take it to another level. When you when you look at the prospects of what you've been through um, in your life through the sport of tennis, and you you could actually see how these guys are transforming, how much how much of it do you see yourself? And and what what messages are you giving them that if if something didn't work for you, you could advise them that that's probably not the road to go down. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to that, the bottom line, what I tell all of all of my players doesn't have to be those top three guys. It's all the top juniors we deal with, 12s, 14s, 16s, 18s, up to the adults. Um, and that's giving them, like, as much advice of the mistakes that we made earlier in our careers. You don't have to wait five, six years to figure out that you need to follow through on your back end this specific way and stuff like that. Um, and just truly finding out their why. Like, why do they play? Um, you know, enjoying the process, um, not not allowing it. Like once it becomes too stressful, then you don't really get the opportunity to to play at your highest level. So, more like a life levels that we're talking to them about that with, you know, yeah, how how to stay mentally tough through through the grind. And you um, you've been you've been back now and been playing. You've gone hard court. You've gone the clay court. You've gone. How, how much of that, when you're when you're number one and you're playing in different tournaments on different courts, does it take for you mentally to prepare? Because obviously techniques are different, ball speed is different on different courts. But you've been able to master it, especially at home. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I I've played some of my better tennis away, um, but yeah, it it's all a part of the the preparation in it. It's not you know for someone at this level and the guys that we play against away, even though it's a big difference and it can make a difference at the you know like you see how Federer does better on the the grass and Nadal on the clay. Um, that's for like when someone holds that, but for the general guys who play a lot of tennis, I mean, it's tricky as in the footwork, but that, that that's really the lowest layer of mental toughness, you know, to be dealing with. So, so that um, is more on the the will and the determination every day, not every single day, but most of the year to get up and conduct yourself in a way that will have you keep the one spot and have you be able to compete on the international stage. And, um, you know, a lot of people don't see what that takes. So that that's more of um, the tricky part, you know, moving forward. And the hardest part for the young guys to get up you know, to them levels. It's how much work are you willing to put in every day? It's 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 truly a mental grind. How how important is it for especially these youngsters now coming through to to sort of be involved in what we consider the major festivals such as Pan Am, CAC, Commonwealth and the Olympics to, to try and get into those competitions as a stepping stone in their professional if that's what they do, professional career. 
Yeah, I think it all plays. I mean, tennis is a lot different than those Olympic sports, but that plays, you know, a part in the pathway that that they can use to get where they want to go. I mean, you know, I got to play in the Commonwealth Games. Um, would have loved to have played in a couple more of them going through, but sometimes the tennis kind of path doesn't always work exactly with that Olympic path, but it's definitely something that, you know, we push them to try to to look at as goals and to have them in their in their um, long term development plans. Well, we know um, right now there's nothing happening um, post post um, COVID nineteen. What are you planning as far as games uh, competitions? You know, down the road for for MTM. Sure. No, I mean we're we're just I mean we're ready. I mean we're we're looking at. Um, you know, our contract is up at Fairmont in December, so who knows what will happen after that? Who knows what will happen with the hotel through this COVID? Um, so all we can do is is be ready to to finish with a bang and you know, down there with I mean, I think we have about eight or nine events that we want to have from the time we're looking at end of May ish just from our you know, our calendar per se. However, the COVID goes, that's gonna obviously dictate how we're gonna do this, but we're ready to just um, put on all the events. We got our, our Easter Bowl. We're still going to run that. We got our Red Bull Festival that brings out a lot of the um, growing the sport at the grassroots level and, and starting to because that's I mean, we, we talk a lot about Trey and Tariq and Daniel and these guys. But but the truth is, if we want to be consistent at the higher level, we have to grow it from the bottom and we have to keep more numbers in the sport. Well, in tennis specifically, other sports as well, if we expect to be able to you know, do this for a long time. It can't just be all in one person or all in that person. So for us, that's why we, we push and do those areas because you've, you've known me at the highest level for a long time. But I mean, I'm truly pushing as much as I can, you know, at that at that grassroots and the younger level. Um, and that's what's going to make the difference in the future. All right. Well, you and your family stay safe. Um, we look forward to talking to you once things are back open as to what the plan is moving forward as far as tennis competitions at Fairmont Southampton. Sure, you stay self as well, safe as well. You gotta be around more people than me. Uh, well, I'm doing things a little different nowadays. Okay, <laughs> I see that, I see that. <laughs> All right, you take it easy. All right, have a good one. Okay, man.